walk with me, talk with me for a while. You've never been short on confidence, which is one of the things you had to address here. Um, you've always been interesting, and you've always talked about something that you're really familiar with. So it's really easy for you to get up and talk to us and hold our attention, which is one of the things that also you're supposed to do. Now, one of the things that we really like about you is how you speak about experiences that are common to us. Oh, and that was one of the mission statements that you have to take care of. We've all been on hikes. It seemed to me that this speech was just fraught with incredible opportunities to build up suspense, um, to make us even more aware of the dangers of walking out on a speech half-cocked, so to speak. Now, can I see your notes? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. Because there's part of this that asks about the organization of the speech. And I know that the, it, it had an order to it because you narrated the speech from beginning when you left to the end. But there were some remarkable things that happened along the way that went far beyond sequence that I think if you had written them out, you would have said, oh, this is one to focus on. Like, wow, we discovered that we have a flashlight, at the end of the day, that is. Or, wow, uh, this is the second time we've kind of avoided the term that you used was the information or the, what was the term you used? Uh, anyway, it was a term you used several times, and we began to see, OK, you're not paying attention to the circles that are on the tree. Um, there's water on the path you plot on. There's snow now. You continue on. And that would have, those would have been really great opportunities to build up the tension. And especially when you start talking about being six hours in, and it's supposed to be an eight-hour hike. And you could have been telling us, OK, now we're really far beyond. And at some point, I really wasn't aware of the kids until you showed them the movie. The kids kind of suddenly appeared out of nowhere, at least for me. And, and I always have an issue with, OK, how closely am I paying attention? to all the details of the speech. So that might have been something that you could have worked with to make this speech even more arresting than it was. Because, I mean, if you wrote this up, you could send this to, is there still a Reader's Digest? I don't know. But that's the kind of thing that you would read in Reader's Digest. So you're, you were an English major or a communications major. You probably had to read a lot of short stories and things like that. So I think if you took some of the techniques that you must be familiar with from those times and applied it to that narration, it would have even been more arresting than it was. Okay? But it was a t you, c you held our attention from beginning to end. And I think there were a, a number of things that the details that you brought up, especially when we're getting closer to the end and we find out that you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt that one of the gals is wearing sandals. Now, that would have been something that if I were writing this, I'd have to think, OK, now, do I put that at the beginning, or do I wait till the end? Now, having waited till the end, it really made it even more impactful in some way. So inadvertently or unconsciously, you may have done it the right way. <laughs> so I just wanted to take the opportunity to walk with you and talk with you, fully dressed and fully comfortable in this room, and encourage you to continue to speak you, you know, revisit yourself. Um, when I was in school, they taught me that the unexamined life is not worth living. Okay? I mean, what a huge judgment uh -huh, to be taught when you're in, in high school. Um, but I think if you just had gone over that a couple more times, I don't know how many times you did go over it. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're a great improviser. Okay. Do something more. Work with intention. But you're a great improviser. Thank you. Thank you.